Welcome back to the Warwick F1 show, and we're starting today with the news. <laughs> the, stop. We were just doing this. You can't laugh at me. Right, we're going to cover all the stories that have taken place over the last uh, month or so during the winter break, and I think F1 is kicking back into kind of being back with the amount of news that has happened over the last week especially. Yeah, there's been a, a lot. Yeah, there's been a lot, and there's, like, very news as well, which is good as well, so... I know. <laughs> right, we'll start with the most recent bit of news, which, as of recording, happened 34 minutes ago yeah. on the BBC <laughs> web page. Um, Charles Leclerc has a new Ferrari contract for um, several seasons, so an unspecified yeah. amount at the moment. So, multiple reports I've seen on Twitter, so... <laughs> but, like, through, like, reliable people that normally know what they're talking about, think it could be about five years. Okay. So we're taking to 2029. So well into the yeah, new... Yeah, well into new the new regs, regs. Well into having an idea of what Ferrari like. And they've got him tied down then. Yeah. So now the big question is, who's his teammate for the new regs? That's kind of where Ferrari have left themselves now. Yeah, because they've definitely put like a mark in the sand that Leclerc is their... Well, it's not maybe their principal driver, but it's definitely a driver they're building or keeping the team around yeah. for the next... Um, few years as we build towards the new regs and then into the new regs as well and yeah I think it will be interesting Sainz has a contract to the end of this year I think it's 2025 I think it's 25 it's 25 it takes him to the new regs and then then we'll see how it goes then we'll see but Um, yeah oh actually I don't know I think yeah but we've had this discussion too many times to not know either way um, Ferrari also have a number of young drivers kind of coming up the ranks you've got Teo Porcher yeah. through um well we'll come on to uh, twenty twenty four. Through okay. Aston Martin and Sal Aston Martin? I think no, Alfa Romeo the one, Salberish. The one that I would look at would be Ollie Berman. Ollie Berman was yeah. Is like I I would be astounded if he doesn't have a drive next year. Mm-hmm. I'd be slightly shocked if it's the Ferrari one. I don't think they don't but Ferrari then, never do that well, you've got Science runs out at the end of this year, so it's then a one year filler contract with I know, Sergio Perez. <laughs> <laughs> Nico, H- give Nico Hulkenberg oh, oh, for a receipt for one year. <laughs> yes, I'd be down for that. That'd be good. That'd yeah. be good fun. Or Alex Albon for a year. Ooh. It's been talked about a little bit. Yeah, he's been heavily linked for I Ferrari. Albon in, in a Ferrari kind of makes sense in my mind. Him and Leclerc get on well. It'd be, it would work, I think. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of contracts as well, we'll move away from Leclerc um, now. Mercedes, um, double double contract mm. for some of, not their drivers, uh, but some of their staff. James Allison signing a long-term contract extension and Toto Wolff signing another three years Mercedes deal to keep leading uh, leading the team into, um, into the new regs. And, I mean, they've both been given new contracts, perhaps in spite of the downturn in performance that Mercedes have seen over the last two years, but I guess it kind of shows faith. That it helps when you, able to helps when you own the team as well. It also yeah, helps. I mean, also, I mean, consider you know they they dominated for eight years. I think mm. you, you benefit of the doubt almost. Yeah, benefit of the doubt. Plus, you know, you're going to have a different form at some point. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, three years. For Toto, kind of that, that aligns it almost with you think maybe Lewis Hamilton's kind of projected career trajectory. I could see him staying in the sport for three years, maybe into twenty six, depending on how good the Mercedes are with that new regs. Yeah, I think that gives them both one year to see what Merck are like with the new regs, and if they're not happy, they can step away. Yeah, yeah. and I think Makes that sense. would probably kind of be what you do what expect. Because I mean, Toto will. I saw a graphic of the team principals, and now <laughs> Mike Crack is the third longest serving team principal <laughs> at <laughs> joint one year. It's, yeah. it's genuine. It's Horner in 2005 ish, Toto in 2013, and then Mike Crack yeah. in 20, that's, that's 2022. <laughs> the greatest name in F1. Oh, yeah. That was two years now. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, it shows uh, that. Kind of very, very new blood coming into the sport. Yes. Yep. And potentially Big having that experience. Over. I mean, but then you look at the other side. Christian Horner's been in that spot for 19 years. Um, but he's also done a phenomenal job. Yes. yes. No, mean, no, no, no. It, it goes without saying. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably move away from contracts. They aren't the most interesting things. 
yeah. in no. the world and move towards probably the biggest news over the last week especially um, the Spanish Grand Prix yeah. is moving away from uh, Barcelona and towards Madrid in 2026 another street circuit you right I was originally sceptical, but just before we started, uh, you showed me a video, Will, of uh, Williams doing kind of a sim run around the track, and it actually doesn't look no, bad. No, it's not horrendous. In my mind, it's like the midpoint between Vegas and Miami. Miami. Like, it's wide enough, you've got good overtaking, but it's like also got that windy middle part yeah. that the end of Miami has. There's a surprising amount of elevation as well, I noticed on the video. I don't know how realistic that is to That's true. maybe um, real life. But I think it is give, it's giving off kind of those Miami vibes. I think a bit of Russia as well with that long, um, long hairpin. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Famous, famously loved races. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but all the corners I thought were kind of slower. They looked faster than maybe I expected it to. I think... It's got a roundabout. It does have a roundabout. You wouldn't know on the actual... But yeah, no. no, looking at the the onboard. Mm. Is, that, is that maybe at the end of the long strike where there's this ridiculously dangerous shit Oh, I think yes. be, actually. <laughs> oh, dear. But I think, obviously, there is that move away from a traditional racetrack to another street circuit, which I think most people have kind of had the most issue with. I mean, Barcelona was never a track for for especially good racing. Obviously, they tried to um, change that with the changes to the track, I think, what was it, in 2021 and then 2023 when we took off, or they took off the final final chicane. And last year's race was worse. (laughs) It was, I don't think it was worse. I don't think it was better. I think it's kind of the same. Yeah, I think the track is not great for overtaking Mm. to begin with anyway. Yeah, I think it is just, because it is moving away from kind of a traditional track towards the street, it's got people yeah. a bit up in arms yeah, about it, and I can kind of understand that. I think as it's well. a sh- I think it's a shame for like the lo- like the more junior formula. I think they were always good races around Catalonia, mm. but you look at the F one races. The last good F one race around uh, was what probably twenty sixteen, twenty seventeen, maybe. One if, where one where both marks crashed. Yeah, and even then there wasn't yeah. a load of overtaking. It was just can you stop behind Max? Yeah. yeah, I mean, you almost go back to like 2012, even when past the Maldonado. That. that was that was a decent. But race. yeah, that, I mean, that was a good race. But that was kind of Spain at its peak. Um, Pirelli peak when yeah. the tires all just disintegrated <laughs> after five laps, as they should. It makes the race <laughs> much more interesting. <laughs> yeah, and they all, I mean, all had to do about five pit stops or something. I missed that time. But I mean, it hasn't really Spain. I. Out of all the permanent tracks to lose, I feel like well, they Spain... Were me- they were meant to lose it a few years ago anyway. Hmm. I think it was COVID season, it was meant to come off, and they kind of put it in to kind of, as a filler, and they were like, oh, we're going to make all these changes, and then... It's basically... It, it almost made it, like Abu Dhabi yeah. almost made it worse, because... That's basically what Imola did. They came yeah. onto the calendar in COVID and were like, eh, this is all right, no, stick yeah, around. Imola's got the history there, doesn't it, I suppose, mm. to yeah. Extent, yeah. which Spain doesn't quite... I just don't want it to um, start a precedent when we no. move away from tracks because I think some other reports um, I saw suggest that Japan might be the next on the chopping block. And apparently, to- Tokyo would be quite sick, but apparently it's um, I can't believe the names. What's the Osaka? Okay. Apparently, they want to do a street race in Osaka oh. instead of um, Suzuka, which. Personally, I'd probably no. draw a line in the sand there. Yeah, that that's that's a bit too far. Yeah, take it. That's one of the core tracks that you need to keep. Yeah, I do wonder though. Like, where are the new like? Are, are there any new markets for Formula One that we haven't got gone into yet? Obviously, there's Kyle Army. Africa. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's Kyle Army, but you kind of we've kind of got to the point where it seems all the countries that wanted a race and can afford it and can afford it are now on. The calendar. The calendar. Yeah. So, which isn't a good thing, but it's also not a bad thing. Yeah, maybe, um, m- maybe this is still a very outside chance, but maybe even India as well, because there's a in India there's a massive resurgence in motorsport, mm. especially because MotoGP has recently gone back to Noida and the board's international circuit as well. Now, mm. um, they had, I mean, it had a lot of teething issues, being the first race and with like just general infrastructure. Yeah, but that's typical. But yeah, you, you look at Vegas. It actually had to yeah. cancel a whole practice session, but yeah. everyone's so excited to go back. So. Yeah, and that I think is the thing. There have been, I feel like, with the street tracks that have been introduced, 
they've generally been more hits than misses. I think Miami yeah. was definitely. I mean, I think Miami's the only one you can look at and say that was a really bad miss. Mm. And so, like Baku, I think is moving kind of down a little. Baku, bit. I think the only reason Baku's on the calendar is because of the amount of drama it had initially. Yeah, and yeah. that's kind of gone in the last few years, and so the racing's not good. Yeah. And it's kind of exposing the track to what it is. But like Jeddah was Jeddah's great. Jeddah's great. Um, Vegas was was good as well. Obviously, once it got past all the teething problems, like generally the street tracks haven't been bad. It's just because they're street tracks, and I fully understand that criticism. Yeah. I mean, it's not like I'd rather race. Yeah. It's on... it's just like the entire yeah. identity of F1 race tracks has just yeah. been shifting in the last five years. As ever since. The financial boom has really just started to take place. I mean, I can understand why, but and personally, I am also a fan of the per- permanent mm. racetracks myself. Just like you know, because then we are traditional racetracks and everything. Mm. But obviously, F1 is now moving in such a direction that it needs to become a lot more commercialized in order to survive in this day and age, mm. and basically the, every every sport now. Mm. The, the only thing I will say is, if you think about the tracks that have given us the best races in the last few years so they have been street circuits predominantly yes especially yeah. apart from Zandvoort last year a lot of them were so I mean Albert Park technically a street track but Jeddah was, has been great the last Jeddah few years good. I mean Saudi's uh, not so, the same thing uh, Vegas is great even Sing- Monaco even Monaco Monaco's, like, uh, Singapore as well yeah. so it's like these tracks they're, they're going to street circuits because they're providing good racing whereas you look at some of the actual fixed tracks you look at maybe well catalonia for example imola mm. not exactly the most exciting races but they've got the history but like spa's never really spa been. again it's a good Monza's track. not had a, last year was an exception but recent races at spa have been at monza even have been covered over by shocking finishes but mm. it's not been masses of overtaking no. i mean it, i think at the moment it's quite a hell it's almost quite a healthy balance between street circuits that do yeah. good racing. I wouldn't want it to go much further. No, I think if it goes much further, we get towards Formula E territory. Yeah. And I've, I've sent you this tweet as the 2006 calendar. Yeah. It's a beautiful. Just Google the 2006 calendar, then add a few street races that we like. Yeah. And then you've got the perfect F1 calendar on there. Takes you to about 20 races. Perfect. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. Right. Um, big news in a principal leaving. The sport. Uh, Gunter Steiner. Uh, yes. Stepping down after 10 years. Maybe alluding to it. Stepping down. <laughs> uh, yeah, leaving, stepping down, jumped before he was pushed. I don't, I, they officially said leaving. Wanting more money for the team. His contract had expired and Haas chose not to extend it. Well, he was basically just pushed out of the team. It was a AK difference sat. of philosophy, wasn't yeah. it? Mm, um, yeah, been replaced by Ayo Komatsu, who um, did work at the team, former director of engineering seems as far as um i can tell he seems like quite a sensible team principal i think from what he said they've so gone the other way to what ferrari did they've gone from someone that was very technically minded very intelligent mm. as well, this is what ferrari did to someone that's a very good person at running and organizing a team yeah to now someone that is especially with a smaller budget i think probably they're wiser to do someone that's going to extract as much performance as possible yeah. from what they've got no, and, and put yeah. the car in the right direction. So I think Gunter Steiner wasn't. He was a great character, but I think he would have been more suited to somewhere like. Well, I'd love to see him be like the new Alpine team principal. I think that'd be great, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think yeah. they've got one now anyway. But I think um, I could see Gunter going kind of over back to over to America again, yeah. working in IndyCar or maybe or even NASCAR WEC. or WEC. I mean WEC. The, yeah. the Daytona, not yeah, Daytona twenty four hours is coming up. Yeah, this weekend, next weekend, next weekend. Yeah, third or fifth. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, kind of expected. Haas haven't really. They've gone backwards. Yeah, they have gone backwards even yeah. from the start of when they joined, kind of F one. Um, even the start of the new regs last year when yeah. they were like fifth overall to start the season. Got and, pole. In Brazil, well, yeah. Yeah. well, it's a poll. Yeah, it's still a poll, but it was just dreadful. Yeah. I they, mean, they were good in quality. It was just the races. Driver so. selection hasn't helped. Yeah, no. But I mean, to be fair, I mean the credit, uh, the one thing Gundersen has done well is keep the team afloat mm. throughout all these years. Because Haas would be would have been especially during COVID, they would have been possibly the team. That was stretched financially the yeah. most, and the whole rich energy fiasco. <laughs> yeah, that that didn't help. Cause I don't, because I think because I never re- got anything else other than the initial Donation. injection of money. Yeah. So, yeah. 
I think um, for them, 2026 is going to be a crucial, yeah, crucial time. You kind of maybe like what Williams oh, I, did to a certain extent. I, I think successful. this year could be very big if Andretti don't get the say and has go backwards. Then I think there's a very good chance you see this team sold. Mm. It could yeah, I mean American to American kind of works. Yeah. I mean what well, Haas and Andretti. Wow. That uh, was that where Haas ever in IndyCar? Andretti will probably say. I think Haas will more mask on it. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, you've kind of got that American link, link as well. All right. Um, in keeping with ruining everyone's livery reveals, uh, McLaren were just like, nah, here, here it is. Have it. <laughs> <laughs> just have it. Um, they've taken off the blue, like, obviously, it's very hard to describe a livery over audio. It's like thick stripes. Yeah. It's like a big orange stripe at the front mm. over the whole car. Then a black stripe. Then a stripe. black stripe and then an orange stripe at the back. It's like the Cincinnati Bengals. <laughs> it's a lot, it's a lot cleaner. Yeah. It does, it looks much the, better. The old ones were messy, they were covered in different mm. like branding and like it was just random splashes of colour here and there, whereas this is like very defined, looks very sleek. Yeah. The number of sponsors, I get it, but kind of just yeah, they're everywhere on quite, the car. Yeah. It looks it looks a lot better. No, but yeah. I mean I missed the blue, but McLaren again and we've discussed it a lot, the probably the best turnaround in performance. For a team over the last, we say this every year. No, but like, at, like it was oh, in terms of like the last yeah. five, ten years, yes. yeah, in terms yeah, yeah. Of like over the last ten years, and yeah, it, can they kick on from here? I mean, the vibes this year is um is a lot more positive. I mean, obviously the whole launch last year was literally just them saying, "Oh, we didn't, we couldn't meet our targets. We're going to be mm. rubbish for the first five weeks." It was all. It was. It was possibly the most depressing. Yeah. Car review, car review I've, I've ever seen from McLaren last year, and obviously, but then obviously we saw that massive upturn in form. They managed to find something this year. They're seeming even more confident um, than they were back in the last season. So, obviously, the expectation is for McLaren to keep that upper trajectory going. Hopefully, do what Aston Martin did and actually stay at the stay at that level for the whole season rather than drop yeah. off of a cliff. But we'll see how it goes. We'll I mean, Lando Norris was the second highest point scorer after Max Verstappen since their upgrades yes. kind of came in and they can keep that going and we hope we'll so right? <laughs> um, they can challenge not challenge maybe challenge Red Bull depending on how much of a trajectory that is but it kind of does feel the teams on like from the from the doldrums of like 2017 18 that year yeah. when they were being hit with thousand place grid penalties every other race yeah they read like this has been an improvement, and realistically, they probably should have. In any normal year, they would have run won a race uh, yeah. last year. Comfortably. It's just Max Verstappen, yeah, and his dominance. Oh. Any um, more news? Um, um, big team names. Yes. Oh, I completely forgot about the team. Yes. I, I wish we had. I wish. <laughs> I had yes. As well, right? Should we do the the word? Not. No, they're the both. They're, they're, they're just both. The first, no, the first we'll one. do them in the order they came out. Yeah. So, Al- Alfa Romeo Racing have been renamed. Well, Alfa Romeo withdrew their sponsorship of yeah. the team. And they've, been, and they've been renamed Stake, what's it, Stake Kick? F- Stake F1 Kick. It's Stake F1. And then if they're not allowed gambling, it's Kick F. It's kick F1. Yeah. And in certain places like Sky and BBC, it will be Sauber F1. This makes no sense. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, I did see tweets that were like, this isn't new. This is like, I yeah. mean... It might be like Red Bull. Red Bull is literally just a branding yeah. name, but it's just been in the sport for so long. For so long, like that was a great tweet. It was like, imagine if Twitter was around in two thousand and five when Jaguar changed to Red Bull. Yeah, and like the the amount of us people up in arms about that. Realistically, we're gonna call them Sauber. Well, realistically, it's two years max. Yeah, yeah. Then it's Audi. Yeah, and so. like it's they're gonna they're gonna be called Sauber by the broadcast. They're gonna be called Sauber by it, no one. They're gonna have a really nice livery because they've got a great color scheme. Yeah, yeah. But we get the livery. We can just ignore the name. Yeah, yes. yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it isn't like Mar- the what the Mastercard Lola back in nineteen ninety eight. <laughs> this isn't the, the concept new. of like companies sponsoring teams isn't especially new. It just no. they all sound a bit dumb. I yeah. mean, look, Mercedes. It's Mercedes AMG Petronas Formula One team. Or a Ramco Aston Martin. Yeah. <laughs> or was it? Col- a BWT yeah, it? Alpine. Yeah. yeah. 
Like it's, oh, it's BWT. Oh yeah. my god, they're teasing a, a pink camo livery. Oh, are they actually? Have that, you not seen this? That no, I've not seen that it. That could look like the worst thing on the planet. Or I'm, the best thing. It's yes. most definitely going to be a testing livery. This is why Ryan hates that, the red one. Or it's going to be <laughs> surely Alpine, like one of the most like known car brand, like rate, like historic racing brands. With that beautiful blue color, cannot be a pink camo car. <laughs> I just want him to do it. It'll be quite funny. I quite like the pink, the fully pink livery they had last. I time. don't like that it's either half and half. I miss their French flag livery. That was like the first. Oh, that was what was 20, so nice. 21? I think it was Alonso's last year. Yeah, when um, Ocon won in Hungary. Yeah, that's yeah, that metallic, was that so metallic nice. blue. That metallic mm. blue was lovely. Yeah. yeah, and then the other team. <laughs> I might get this wrong, but I think it's Visa Cash App RB. That's it. Is that's that it? it? Yeah, Visa Cash App Red Bull. It's it's not, not, no, it's, it's, no, it's no, VisaCashApp.rb. They've it. not actually told us what RB stands for. No, it is just RB. It doesn't have. It's it doesn't nothing. stand for anything. But in the FIA team registration thing, mm. the like the owner company is Racing Bulls. So I think the understanding is that on broadcast there'll be Racing, Racing Bulls, Bulls and Salva will be the two like names, and it's just a a money scheme. Oh, I, I don't know how I feel. This, it's a way to buy Red Bull parts. Yeah, this one kind of feels more dodgy for me. <laughs> like, I think... I can see... I mean, we had these concerns, what, back in 2020, when, um... When, what was it, Racing Point at the time... Pink Mercedes. ...came out with literally just a 2019 Mercedes car. And Hassa bought parts off Ferrari. I guess that's kind of not been frowned upon as much because Ferrari. I bet. Um, <laughs> but this, this, I, I'm very interested to kind of see how um, Racing Bulls. Such an awful oh. name. Yeah. <laughs> how Racing Bulls do. I get why they got rid of the name, but I don't know why they didn't just go back to Toro Rosso. Just, Toro Rosso is just Red Bull. And their livery is. <laughs> Their liveries were so nice, especially like towards the end when they were twenty seventeen. When they went metallic, oh, so good. the twenty seventeen Toro Rosso. Just look it up; it's it's beautiful. Although the, I fancy it, it may be going back towards that. Looking at what like how the actual logos look. I'll forgive them if the cars look good. But I fancy it's gonna be like BWT and have a big, fat green cash app logo on the side. I'll hate them if they do that. Yeah. Yeah. Any more news that we've forgotten about? I don't think no, so. Great. Think so. so that has been uh, the news for this week. And yeah, thank you for listening.